From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Good morning, Senor Dollar. Is La Guiara Cable Office calling? We have an answer to cables you sent to Hartford, Connecticut. Good. Would you like me to read the message, Senor? No, I'm on a telephone with extensions. Oh, I see. Perhaps you prefer I have it delivered then? No, no, I don't. Then you will come in for it yourself? Yeah, just as fast as I can get there. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey in the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location Caracas, Venezuela, to the Home Office Worldwide Mutual Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Alder Matter. Expense account continued. At the cable office, I ran into another dead end. Vic Kelly back in Hartford had come up with absolutely nothing on either Dora Jansen, who called herself Doris Cole, or Arthur Singer, the little man she'd hurried off an incoming liner yesterday. Complete strikeout. I headed outside, caught a glimpse of Mrs. Billy Alder watching me from across the street. Social life changing, Mrs. Alder? Does being my hostess include tailing me? Does being on La Guerra Street constitute tailing you? (laughs) Preserve me from amateur detectives. Good morning, Mr. Dollar. Now, come on. You rushed out of the house so fast you couldn't possibly have eaten. I'll buy you breakfast. I knew it was curiosity that made her take me up. She just couldn't resist the thought that maybe I'd give something away, let something slip. She ate warily, tentatively. We must have looked like two boxers in a close fight sitting on the edge of their stools, waiting for the last round, the one that would decide the winner. You're staring. Thinking. You love your husband, Mrs. Alder? There'd better be a reason for a question like that. Let's stop sparring, huh? You know why I'm down here. Do I? You told me you did the other day. So I did. Now, don't be aloof, lady. You're not that much in the clear. You've been the beneficiary several times and dropped. My daughter is the present one, I believe. And what exactly is your point? There's been no crime committed. No crime? Somebody's bullet misses your husband by inches and you call it no crime? Thank you for breakfast. Don't forget, I saw you out on the grounds of the house searching the place that shot came from. I told you before. You knew an automatic pistol was used, admitted looking for a shell. You talk too much, Mr. Dollar. And you talk too little. Look, why have you been tailing me? It's certainly not to see that I'm protecting your husband's life. So it's obviously to make sure that I don't find out something. Now, what is it, Mrs. Alder? And why is it so terribly important I don't find out about it? If you won't leave, Mr. Dollar, I will. There's this about getting someone angry enough, fearful enough. It makes them forget about caution. Mrs. Alder never once looked back, simply headed straight for the cheap little waterfront hotel where Arthur Singer was staying. She stayed for over half an hour, and when she left, she still looked frightened. Whatever the game was, it looked like everyone was a player but me. But Mrs. Alder's move helped, started an idea gnawing at me. So I headed for Caracas in the office of a smart cop, Jefe Velasquez. I needed someone to talk to, and the jefe was a good listener. Come, amigo, sit down. Tell me where it feels wrong, huh? Billy Alder. He does all that changing in his policy, so I assume he's scared of being knocked off. Probably by one of the people who has been named a beneficiary of the policy. So? So now I'll take the other people concerned. Alder's wife is as much a clam as her husband is. Also, she knows what kind of a gun was used to take that shot at him. Dora Jansen, a woman who uses an alias and is obviously afraid of me. Arthur Singer, a little man Dora has hidden in a waterfront hotel. And now I find Alder's wife knows about the little man, too. Conclusion, amigo? That the three of them are in on something together. But not to kill Alder for that policy. His daughter gets it all. Yet Alder is afraid. And I think he's scared of something the others know. Now, suppose that shot wasn't meant to kill him, just frighten him, a sign that somebody meant business. That is a nice piece of logic. Yeah. Now all I got to do is make it work. Look, Hefe, whatever this deal is, nobody's going to make a move till I'm out of here. 
So? So, good, bad, or indifferent, I'm going to do a little acting. I stayed with Velasquez another half hour, setting things up as best I could. Then I drove to the airport and paid item 11, $309.80 for a plane ticket marked Hartford, Connecticut. Sure, it was an expensive prop, but this was one act I had to be convincing in. I drove back to Caracas, pasted a real angry look on my face, marched into Billy Alder's sumptuous office and threw the airline ticket on his desk. He studied it for a long minute. What does this mean, Dollar? That I've had all of you I can take, Alder. You and your keep me alive. You are going back to the States? You can read. The ticket says Hartford, Connecticut. It also says the 6 o'clock plane, because there's nothing earlier. But, but why? Why, Dollar? So I can get back and make my recommendations to the insurance company. You know what I'm going to recommend, Alder. Uh, please, wait. That they cancel your policy because of your refusal to cooperate. Sorry, Alder. Dollar, please. Now, don't do it. I beg There's you. There's a clause in that policy. I don't care about that policy. Now, don't you understand? Understand what? Listen to me. All that changing of beneficiaries. I only did that to make them send someone down here. I need protection. Against what? I... I'm in a jam. All I want is protection until until it's peacefully settled. Do you understand? No, plainer. I know someone wants to kill me over a business deal. I'm asking you to see that I stay alive until I have time to, to reason with this man. Who is he? I, I can't tell you. Then let me tell you something. He's just arrived in town. How did you... Now, don't you see, Mr. Dollar? You must stay. Sorry. Goodbye, Mr. Alder. <laughs> I went back to the Alder house, packed my bag, and said my goodbyes. Neither Mrs. Alder nor Dora Jansen wept. I drove to the airport, checked my luggage in. Then I slipped away, drove back to Caracas the long way. A half hour later, I checked into a little side street hotel where Jefe Velasquez had reserved a room for me. Then came the hardest part, the waiting. That six o'clock plane must have been way out over the Caribbean when the call finally came. Uh, yeah? Velasquez here. You tired of waiting? Oh, brother, you know it. Look, Jefe, your men check in. Maybe I should have taken part of the work. Be patient, amigo. Your whole idea depends on the thinking you took that plane. You must stay right where you are. But uh, what about your men? Have I they... I get a call every couple minutes, amigo. Alder, his wife, the Dora Johnson, uh, Arthur Singer. I can tell you every move they make in the last three hours. But they haven't made the one I'm waiting for, huh? You will know it three minutes after they make it. If they make it. Thanks, Efe. Five minutes later, Velasquez called again. He took only enough time to tell me he was on his way and to be down on the street in two minutes. I was. I only beat him by seconds. Come on, amigo. Well... It looked like your plan worked, Juanito, this uh, Dora Johnson. Yeah? As soon as she learned your plane left, the one you did not take... She rushed to the Waterfront Hotel, pick up the Arthur Singer. Then the two of them rushed to the Alder house. And? Alder must have seen him coming because he jumped in his car and raced out in the direction of his oil Ville Caranero. They see him and follow him. That's where we headed for. Then we better get things going, get there before Singer kills Alder. I don't know whether or not he deserves killing, but I know one thing. It'll cost my company a quarter of a million bucks. Velasquez's men were plenty good. Halfway to Carnero, one of them flagged us down, told us both cars had definitely passed his way. And when we reached the oil field, another one waited at the gate. He told us Billy Alder, Dora Jansen, and Arthur Singer were in a little work shack across the field. We left the car and moved as quietly as we could toward the shack. There was a weird feeling. In every direction, you could see the great oil rigs working, pumping, ignoring us. We reached the shack, peered cautiously through the window. An even weirder scene was taking place. An almost hysterical Dora Jansen pointed a luger at a sweating Billy Alder. A terrified Arthur Singer pleaded with her. Their words pushed easily through the thin wooden slatting. Dora, don't, please don't do it. You'll only make things worse. Your brother's right, Dora. Dora, listen to me. Like he listened to you four years ago. What did it get him, Mr. Fancy Promoter? Tell me that. I'll make it right with him. A quiet gentleman. A bookkeeper who never did anything wrong in his life until you sold him a bill of goods. Now listen to me, both of you. So he rigged your books for you made false entries, made it look like he was responsible for the bankruptcy. And he did the three years in prison that you should have done. For $100,000, that was the deal. And believe me, I'm not trying to cheat him. The money is tied up in my business. I need time, 
but I'll pay him. Pay him? It's been a year since he came out of jail. You'll never pay. You'll try to cheat him out of the money one way or another. I swear to you, don't. It's a lot easier to kill him than pay him, isn't it? Oh, you're crazy. Is that why you kept the Luger in the house? Were you worried when he disappeared? When I shot at you to let you know I meant business? Think what you're doing. Dollar knows all about this. Oh, oh, yes. Your bodyguard must have gotten frightened after I had him beat up the other day. He's on his way to the States in a plane. Dora! No! I'm going to kill you. No! Come on. <laughs> Put it down, Dora. You pull that trigger and he'll still come out the winner. No! Senorita, do not make me fire, please. I don't care. As long as he gets what he deserves. Stand back! Senorita! For a split second, she wavered. Then the hate took over. Uh, uh. Aldous sank to the floor, disbelief on his face. Panicked, she raced down into the night, and I went after her. Dora! No! Dora, hold it! No! There's no place to go! Dora! Hey, I'm making you here! Don't go in there! Ah! What happened to her, Johnny? She panicked, turned to scream at me, and ran right into one of the protection fences around the derrick. She just passed out. She'll come around. How's Alder? Conscious, but I do not know. We better get him to the hospital. Yeah, come on. She didn't mean to shoot him, mister. My sister wouldn't hurt anyone. Sure, sure. Go take care of her. She was only doing it for me. For me, mister. Walter? Uh, I... I would have paid. I wasn't going to cheat him. Hmm? Oh, Dollar. You know? Yeah, we heard it all. I'm glad it's over. Worrying. Want to tell me one thing, Alder? Your wife, where does she fit? She had nothing to do with it. Just knew about it. I wasn't too nice to her for a long time. Other women, her running around, just a way of punishing me, paying me back. She knew I couldn't afford to complain. Yeah, wish you'd have told me a long time ago, Alder. I couldn't. Case could always be reopened. I, I, I couldn't face that. Would have hurt too much. Oh, yeah. But it wouldn't have hurt as much as that bullet. <laughs> Expense account total $833.14. Details Billy Alder was rushed to the Caracas Hospital, underwent some excellent surgery, and uh, relaxed claims department. He's going to make it. As for his shady business tactics, well, that's out of my bailiwick. That's for the law boys. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here's our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, a quiet cabin by a quiet lake, a place ideal for romance and ideal for murder. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Tony Barrett. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in this week's cast were Gil Stratton, Harry Bartell, Barbara Fuller, John Daner, Virginia Gregg, Don Diamond, Vivi Janis, and Tony Barrett. Musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Be sure to join us on Monday night, same time and station, for another exciting story of yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs>